Let's start from scratch and rebuild this thing to show you exactly how it's done. So I'm going to create a new collection and I'm going to disable the previous collection. Now notice in my outline, I have a few more icons than you probably do. The default one is only an eye, which is kind of like a temporary disable. To turn on the other ones, we need to go to the filter and check all of the ones that you see is here. So this one is for selection. This one is for a more permanent disable in the viewport. And then we've got disabling for rendering. So let's start with making a plane. Shift A, mesh, plane. S for scale, and let's make it quite large. Control A to apply the scale. And we have our base. I think it's always nice to know where the ground is when we're dealing with any kind of object for architecture. Next, let's go to top view. Shift A, add mesh, another plane. Let's make it 0.3 by 0.3 meters. So now we have a tiny object. Control A to apply the scale. Go into edit mode by clicking tab. Select everything and E for extrude. And let's make it 0.6 meters tall. So that is our base. This is what we're going to use for pretty much everything. Next up, let's add those little legs on those little edges. So we're going to do two of them and we're going to do it in the following way. Let's select the top face, shift D to duplicate, press escape to duplicate it, but leave it in the exact same place. Now we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. So go to the rotate gizmo, click the green bar and while you're holding, press 90. And now I'm going to move this. And let's scale it S.25. Now let's move it down. And we can make this inside of the object. It doesn't even matter that much. And let's extrude. If we want to be a little bit more precise, let's go and enable wireframe mode. Let's view the selected item. And I'm going to grab that face here, the back face, and I want to align it to the middle of our actual object so let's turn on the snap let's go to the snap options go to edge center so now if we click and hold it should snap to the edge center let me do that again so you see what i'm doing so we have the gizmo we're in the move command in the toolbar click and hold the red arrow so along the x-axis and then if you hover over any axis you see we're actually snapping so now if we look from the top view we see that this is exactly the length that it should be. Next, let's actually get this back to the vertex edge and have a precise movement. So now I'm going to move it half a meter, 0.5 exactly. So to show you how this is done again, click and hold the red arrow. And while we're clicking with the mouse button, type 0.5. Next, we want to duplicate this box and rotate it 90 degrees, but we want it to be exactly rotated from the middle point. One of the important hotkeys to know is Shift S. So if you press Shift S, it brings in the snapping menu. So what we want to do is cursor to select it. And you see, we had this little funny cursor here. So next, let's select our rectangle. So if you click and hover and press L, that selects all the linked items. And now let's go to rotate. But you see the rotate is at the moment in the middle of our object. We want the rotate to be exactly where the cursor is. So we can change that from this top middle menu. Right here where we have something that looks like a chain link. If we click on that and change it to 3D cursor, now we see the gizmo is aligned exactly at the 3D cursor. So before we rotate it, we actually want to duplicate it. So let's go to mesh, duplicate or shift D. And if you press escape, it's going to stay exactly in the same location. Now we're already in the rotate command. We already have our rotation center. So now if you click the blue arrow, click and hold and type 90, we get the exact rotation of 90 meters. So now let's go back to object mode by either clicking tab or selecting it from here. And let's exit out of X-ray mode. Now we have our object. It's the most complicated object you will ever see in the whole entire world. It's made up of the extremely complicated geometry of three boxes but those three boxes are the gateway to the whole entire universe as we will find out so with those three boxes which are part of the same object 
which is about, so my box is 800 mil by 800 mil by 600 mil. Let's go and start applying some modifiers. So let's click on the modifier properties. So our little wrench. Now it's always good to double check the scale of your object when we're applying modifiers. To do that, you have to bring up this sidebar menu. In case you don't see yours, make sure you press this little tiny hidden arrow and it will appear. So it has a series of tabs. We want to keep it on the item tab. So when we are in object mode, we see a scale. If we scale it, you see it scales here. So I just pressed S in object mode. If we go into edit mode and we scale individually, it's, it's scaling, but it's completely different. We're scaling the actual geometry as opposed to the container of the geometry. An object in Blender is essentially a container that can hold all kinds of information. It could be a mesh, it could be a camera, it could be an empty, it could be an image, it could be loads of things. And that container has its own scale, which is independent of the scale within the actual data, which is the mesh in this case. Okay, so now in modifiers, let's go and add an array modifier. And by default, the array modifier is set to be relative to the scale of this item. So if we go back into edit mode, let's enable x-ray so we see what we're doing. Click on that one face. You see our gizmo stays there because right now it's linked to the transform. If we change the transform and go to the gizmo, it changes. So if you want to get back to the way it originally is, if we click here, transform pivot point, and we want medium point. So now if we change that, you see our array changes as well. Let's keep it as is. That's fine for now. And let's change the count to what do you fancy? Let's do 30. 30 in one direction. And now let's add another array modifier. This time we're going to change the factor X to zero and we're going to change the factor Y to one. And let's also make this 30. So now we have our two dimensional array. If we want to, at any point, we can go back into our object and edit it. Let's say we want to make it slightly taller and we make it taller. Let's say we want one side to be slightly further in. We make it further in. Maybe that's too far in because I have my snaps on. So let me disable that undo. Or let's say we want one chain link to be shorter than the other. So let's go into X-ray mode. Select this and I'm going to move it 0.2 and press minus. So if we disable that and let's go to top view and you see now the dimension is different. So let's go back into object mode. I'm going to move this slightly inside and let's see this is 27 meters. So it's, it's fairly large. So what I want to do then is make the chain links a little bit shorter. So we already made one side shorter and it's already selected. So I'm going to click and hold the green arrow and type minus two, whoops, not two, minus point two, minus point two. And now we need to enable x-ray mode to grab the face properly. And let's make this shorter. So I'm typing minus point two as well. So now our object is 18 by 12 meters. I think this is a pretty decent size for a small pavilion. Don't you think so? Besides, we're going to edit it and make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so we slightly modified our geometry. So we still have our chain link. We make it a taller, we made it shorter. So if we go back and disable the array modifiers in the viewport, so that's by clicking this screen icon here. One item is 0.6 by 0.4 meters by 1.28 meters tall. And let's make the height a little bit more refined. So we can click at that top face. And in the sidebar, we see the Z coordinates. The Z coordinates are showing us the location of the center. So let's change that to, let's change it to 0 0.8. All right, so now 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, enable the array modifiers. And I think that's a pretty good start. So the next thing we wanna do is play with this and start to deform it with the lattice modifier. So let's go to top view. And let's add a lattice modifier. So shift A or add lattice. So the lattice is essentially a cage with the only purpose to deform geometry. So the first thing we need to do is scale the lattice so our whole object fits within it. So I'm going to use the S hotkey. So S once 
then G to move it and now we're going to scale it in the X direction so S and then if we press X we scale only in the X direction okay so now our whole object is within the lattice but it's too tall and we don't need it that tall so I'm going to press S and then Z and then let's scale this down and I'm going to go to a side view let's do this again S, Z so it doesn't need to be completely precise as long as the whole object is inside let's rename our base object to pavilion and let's rename our ground to ground and we can just double click at the names in the outliner and they will change by the way these are not in my new collection right now so I'm going to click and hold to select all and then drag them into collection 2 save my file okay so now let's look at our pavilion object add modifier lattice so that's in the third column the form somewhere in the middle we want an object so we can either click in the viewport or we can also click in the outliner so now it's bound meaning that if we go into the lattice go into a edit mode by clicking tab selecting a vertex and moving that vertex around our whole geometry responds so I'm going to press escape because at the moment it's only four vertices right it's actually eight because we have a top and a bottom but we want to make it a little bit more refined let's disable our ground for a second so all we need to do is add a couple of subdivisions within the lattice so with the lattice selected let's go to the green icon which is the object data properties and here we have resolution UVW change the U to 5 and you see now we have a few more subdivisions so if we go into edit mode and drag one point you can see that we have a more refined result and there's a smooth follow between the point that's being dragged and the rest of the points so I'm going to do that because we want to add a couple more subdivisions in the V direction as well so let's do 5 and 5 I think that's a pretty good start and now let's go into edit mode and start editing so the first thing I want to do is move this point and I'm going to enable x-ray mode and the point below and let's move those points quite high look it already looks so beautiful doesn't it by just having a, a small deform modifier so let's move this and let's move that up there right now it's very similar it's almost like a cover that's waking up isn't it so let's deform one side a little bit more and maybe this side flares up so I think I have too many divisions points within our lattice but it's all right because we can go at any point and change the resolution so I'm going to go and change it to three let's see how that goes so what I like to do is always start with the simplest possible deformations and once we think that we have what we want as a basic from that step we can add more subdivisions okay let's try four this is a little bit too simple okay so we want to be able to pass through this object in the middle so let's do something like this and we want to make sure that it's grounded that it's rooted that we can actually pass through it I see something interesting already forming by just playing with it so we're going to support it on the two opposite ends we're going to ground it along here and then we're also going to ground it along this side there so we'll, let's pick up this edge so it sort of flares up 